In this video, I want to walk you through how to use Scholar C's Google Chrome extension in order to be able to let AI summarize research articles for you so you don't have to spend as much time actually diving into research articles, especially if you don't really need to. Before I show you how to download the extension, I want to give you a glimpse into how the extension actually works. So for this case, I'm coming over to one of my research articles that since I already author it, I know what the summary of it should be. And so I want to show you how this works and whether Scholar C's program is actually a good fit for what the article actually says. So to access Scholar C, I already have it downloaded. So I just go up to my extensions on my Google Chrome and I can click here. And then I'm going to click on Scholar C down here where you can see the um, Scholar C extension. And what that's going to do is it will analyze your article. If it's the first time you've looked at that article, it might take it a little bit before it fully analyzes it. But if it's the second time or more, it's going to be a lot faster. So in this case, it pulls the title up here and it pulls a basic kind of conclusion of the paper. And so this is saying that twin was able to fully separate steroids as dimeric adducts of group one metal um, and may provide an additional metric contributing to analyte identification. I actually completely agree with that. That is the main conclusion of this paper. And so we now have its summary flashcard. So it has a couple different things that you can access from it. And so one of the things is just the key concepts, and this is going to be just like tags for this. And overall, this is fairly good of the tags. And then we have the abstract here. So it's kind of just pulling in um, points from the abstract. For there is also a comparative analysis section. And so this is basically talking about how is it adding to or differing from previous research. So it kind of shows you in my introduction, in my results and conclusion, um, basically how is it different from before. So it talks about discrepancies. So this could be really helpful if you're trying to string together like a literature review and trying to see how papers, you know, compare and contrast from each other as well. Then we have a synopsis here. And so this like first section here is just like, I guess it's really interesting because it's saying that scientists have developed a new method for the analysis of steroid isomers. It's kind of true. And then it says a class of small biomolecules that includes cocaine, heroin, and ecstasy. Those are not steroids. So I'm not sure why that's including that there. I think this is kind of not doing as good of a job with this feature. And so it kind of gives a synopsis here as well. It says there were three pairs included in the analysis. I think there were actually like five or six different pairs for this one. <clears throat> Overall, like these two sentences would be really helpful. So I think this is kind of a mix of like not being as accurate and being helpful. So in my case, if you know, I use Notion to help organize my things. So I would take sentences from here and kind of put it into my synopsis in Notion, but I guess I would be a little bit careful just relying on what this says as fact. I would always if you're like trying to search the introduction or something like that, or you're writing in a different paper, I would actually check the article itself because I don't think this is pulling in like 100% accurate. So here's some highlights that they've pulled. And I think this is actually really, really helpful. Um, it's, you know, kind of pulling the main highlights, talking about what are steroids. Here you have it basically um, talking about some of the results. This is another result. This is kind of the conclusion. And then this is kind of a significance. I would kind of expect this one further up, but I think this overall could be really good to kind of copy and paste into a literature organization system so that you're not having to read the whole thing. So then it gives you your summary. So it gives you an introduction, objectives, results, conclusions, which overall I think is fair of what it's pulling. I think it pulls it fairly well. Um, this work is aimed at the further development of IMS separation. Yeah, so overall, I think this is pretty good if you want just a summary version. 
And then you have all these different sets down here. So you're going to see the introduction here, um, different things here. Again, I'm just, I wouldn't 100% trust what this is pulling, but if you want just a quick way to understand what's going on, I think this is a good way to quickly understand a summary of a paper, but I would definitely look in it before, like, um, they're saying different pairs, you know, I don't think there were seven pairs in this, so I'm I'm a little confused on why it's pulling that. So I would just be a little bit careful with directly taking from this. Take this more as a summary, but the individual facts, I would definitely recheck with the actual paper. And then well, something that's really nice about this is it actually has a future work section. And so you can see here, it's pulling the future work from my conclusion paragraph. But if you've watched any of my videos on finding a research gap, you know that one of the places I talk about going is the future work sections of research papers. So the fact that this already has this pulled out is really good for being able to quickly find research gaps. So that's the basics of what this extension to, can do. The other thing that I really want to show you that the extension can do is you can actually download this information from Scholars. If you hit this download here, you can pull it down in Word, Markdown, or PowerPoint. So I'm just going to pull it down in Word, and I can open this up so we can see what this looks like. So it has basically the title here, it has the year that it was published, and it's going to give its, like, a uh, synopsis here, I guess, and then it gives this um, scholarly synopsis, which, again, I don't really agree with. Um, and then it basically just gives you all of the different sections of this paper. So it might not be bad to be able to download this and then put it into the Notion for this paper, so that you have easy access to this data to kind of figure out what was the paper about. And then if you want to dive deeper into that paper, you can always go back and look at the actual paper as well. So overall, I think this can be a really, really helpful tool for you if you are trying to go through tons and tons of papers. And if you're like completely not sure about even what papers to start using Scholarcy on, I would really recommend downloading my 30-day research jumpstart guide. It kind of helps you start to figure out what reviews and what research papers you should read and how to start building out ideas from those papers. But now on to how to actually get ScholarC on your computer. So I've just removed ScholarC from mine. So you can see um, there's no ScholarC in my extensions. So how do you get it on? So if you go to scholarc.com, you can then go to pricing and to actually have an account to be able to save things to your library and be able to mess with things from there. It is um, $7.99 a month. So I'm not mainly looking at that. I'm mainly looking at just the free extension here. So if you click get the extension, it's going to take you to the Chrome Google extension. And so you can see it's here and then you can just hit add to Chrome and then I can click up here and you can see this is happening again. Um, so now it's in here. If it doesn't show up in this tab, you can just click on the little puzzle piece, which is your extension and click on Scholar C from there. And so the, here you have it. If you're on a page that doesn't actually have a research article on it, you will get this message, which is reload the page or go to a new page. Um, and it has this example paper that you can try out just to see what they're about. I hope this is helpful for you starting your journey. And I look forward to making more videos about ScholarC in the future. So if you have any questions about it, leave me a comment down below and I will try and answer your questions and if possible, make new videos about it in the future. I hope you download the 30 day research jumpstart guide to get you off the ground on finding your own literature and reading it and really getting immersed and starting your own research projects. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.